Matt Seidel against Cody Rhodes with Snoop Doggy Dog in the corner, and Snoop Doggy Dog got Arn Anderson's clipboard. Boy, howdy, what a great... Cody couldn't even pull this one off. I'm always praising Cody's matches. I don't know what... Did Matt Seidel have pictures of Cody with a donkey? That Cody decided he's going to have a Starcade main event with Matt Seidel? I'm not knocking Matt Seidel's talent. He's been around for a long time. He does some good stuff. We've also seen him miss some stuff. But he's not been presented as a main event guy here. Cody has been a main event guy from the, for, since the start, but he's also he did that three-minute job to Brody Lee. He's He doesn't need to be going out and having these long, comp ridiculously competitive matches with guys that have been presented as middle card talents. And I mean, seconds into this match, Seidel hit that crazy double knee thing off the top rope onto Cody on the ramp. Looks like it kills both of them. They were up five seconds later and fine. And just go, just doing everything in the world. Cody accidentally hit the mass job guy in the front row. What's his name? Fucking uh, Serpico. Serpentico. Serpentico. Whatever the fuck. Cornholio. I'll, let's call him Cornholio. Cody accidentally hits Cornholio in the front row and Uncle Fester gets mad and then they go back to the match. The, the match was getting old when they went to a break. They come back, listen to this. In just the second half of this match, Cody hits a reverse superplex off the top rope, drops Seidel face first in the middle of the ring, two count. Seidel goes up, does a shooting star press off the top onto Cody. Cody brings his knees up. Boom, hits him and DDTs him, two count. Seidel flips and spins into a submission hold and both bump over the top rope to the floor. And I'm right, when did Seidel become Brock Lesnar? Cody hits the big flying kick, two count. Then they go through multiple cheerleading routines where at one point Cody actually did the hup, hup and boosted fucking... Seidel up onto his shoulders for a shoulder ride like the fucking Chinese acrobats of Taiwan do on the fucking Ed Sullivan show if you're a kid in the 60s. Then Seidel hit another big something, two count, and they're all just jumping back up and trading advantage. Cody knows better than this. And nobody's selling anything, and finally Cody hits two crossroads. He hits him with a crossroads, but then without going for a cover, he gets mad, picks him up, and gives him another one. So we never know whether one would have been enough, but one should have been enough. So Cody needs a hand grenade, apparently, to beat a main event guy because it was everything he could do to beat Matt Seidel, six inches shorter, 20 pounds lighter, and presented as a middle card guy at best. Then here comes Uncle Fester and Cousin It. Cornholio and... What's his goddamn name? Larry the Cable Guy, Luther, Larry, Luther. Dr. Luther. Dr. Luther. He's a proctologist. He started at the bottom and stayed there. <laughs> Dr. Luther and Cornholio jump in and, and jump on Cody. And did you see Fester bending over to hit Cody, who was Cody was laying on the ground and Fester can't get off of his feet or he can't get back up. So he was bending over, hitting him like he was taking a shit in the woods. He couldn't do stomps. I was watching the way he was stomping. He couldn't even do that. Well, he's an outlaw, crippled up, over 50, middle-aged fat fuck, leasing a check, leeching a check, I should say, off of a mark because he's friends with people that have a job. That's how everybody works here. He was... <laughs> He was questionably an, an independent name for two or three years, 25 years ago in Japan. Nobody else has ever heard of this fucking guy. He got a job because he's from Winnipeg and he knows Jericho and Olivier and Callis. And I'm sorry, he may be a nice guy, but seriously, there are goddamn legitimate prospects for pro wrestling stars out there. And this guy is taking up a spot because he's friends with somebody and he's never done a goddamn thing in this business in his life. And he's being paid to sit in the front row and do shit like this instead of guys that have a, all the talent in the world and a career in front of them. Although I don't suggest that any prospects for future stardom go to this company because they'll be buried. But it just shows the fucking amateurishness of their talent picking and positioning anyway 
The baby faces come back and dump Uncle Fester out of the ring, and they position the masked midget. I don't know where they find men over the age of 18 that are still this small. And then Snoop Doggy Dog gets up on the top, says, bring him in closer because he didn't understand physics again. He's so tall to begin with, and he jumps off the top and lands on his feet and then falls forward and splashes Cornholio, and it looked like a cow on ice. And where they had him placed originally, he would have been fine, but Snoop Doggy Dog didn't understand the fucking physics of the matter, so he had him bring him in closer, and then he jumps, lands on his feet, and then bends over forward over the guy with his ass sticking up in the air. And after that, Tony Schiavone, a white man who's three years older than me, said, he's so freaking cool, Snoop Dogg. What the fuck? Tony Schiavone does not believe that Snoop Doggy Dog is so freaking cool. He can't. Jericho starts yelling how he hates all these guys, and then Snoop goes over to the yes. announce table, and Jericho starts smiling and shaking his hand and everything. It, it, it wasn't even the heel, I'm going to suck up to this guy while he's in front of me. He dropped all pretense of working his gimmick and just became Chris Jericho, and he's just hugging a guy like, yeah, great job, Snook. Snook, Snoop, whatever the fuck his name is. Because he's so starstruck that this is an actual celebrity, supposedly. And that was that. Boy, TNT really want this show. Did they push AEW to the level they're pushing this big show or whatever this is? No, they haven't. They haven't. They didn't even. They had go big show fucking ring aprons on AEW. They didn't even. They don't push anything as hard as they're pushing this show. Arn Anderson's like, okay, Cody, let's go. Uh, Arn, hang back tonight. Snoop's gonna coach me. Yeah. What What do you mean? Give him your clipboard too. <laughs> let him Let him do everything. <laughs> So it, what it, what it, name a Snoop Dogg song? Oh, Snoop Dogg's great. I'm not going to let you put down Snoop Dogg. Well, I I don't know that I've ever heard one. Gin and Juice. I you know, know Dr. That. Dre's um The Are Chronic you out of your fucking mind. The Chronic, one of the great albums of all time. Is it rap? Yeah, it's rap. It was Snoop Dogg's I've debut. I've tuned it out. I've tuned it out then. I've heard it and tuned it out because it all sounds exactly the same. Loud fucking nonsense music with somebody fucking saying some shit. Uh. So the next segment on this program was getting fast forwarded regardless of what it was after this previous segment and that splash. But fortunately, it was Abaddon against Sheeta. So I got two for one. I fast forwarded because I was so pissed about Snoop Dogg and I fast forwarded also something I wouldn't have watched anyway. But as I see Abaddon... The more I see Abaddon, I'm happy to know that Pugsley Adams did get work after the Adams Family show went off the air. What the fuck? This four foot ten, flabby, fucking pasty, half bald, weird horror movie fucking gimmick against a fucking another. Do they have a? If I want to see a Japanese girl wrestler the size of Rhea Ripley, and I will fucking join her fan club. But until oh, then, on. for fuck's sake, Ridiculous. can we find one that weighs enough to make an impression in the snow when they walk across the parking lot? She weighs just as much as most of the women wrestlers. Oh, for fuck's sake. She so anyway, weighs more than Britt Baker. All I know about this match, well, I have a tooth and nail rule. All I know about this match <laughs> is that at some point, Abaddon uh, vampired Sheeta and she was bleeding from the neck. And if I'd have been watching it, I would have fast forwarded from that point. She pulled her under the ring. And supposedly bites her on the neck, and she comes out with blood coming out of her mouth, and Sheeta comes out holding her neck and like, like she's bitten her carotid artery. Fuck you. I wouldn't believe it if guys were doing it that looked like they might. And I've seen some guys. I've managed a few guys in fights that would bite your carotid artery out. We've but only not seen the women two. do it. Only the women. Shayna Baszler last year. Well, it wasn't Abaddon. any better when she did it either. No, it was awful. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> 